Hey, y'all want any fish? It might not be USDA, but it's Cross the Creek DA. I guarantee it. Y'all want some fish, y'all call me. Alright guys, so uh, just like that title says, different kind of video today. Different kind of video today. Uh, I'm walking down and we're going to go over uh, some pond, I'm sorry, some farm pond harvesting techniques and uh, we're going to discuss some of the mistakes we kind of made in harvesting and growing and breeding of our catfish on our farm pond. But uh, we're going to walk on up. But as you guys go through this walkthrough with us, I encourage you to click through some of the other videos. You may can see, you know, some of our other pond setups. And uh, keep an open mind. Becca Ann say thank y'all. She said enjoy the show. Here's Griner in the front and Aguma K in the back. Well, now it's vice versa. But Brittany Griner, she's going to be the, the solid black one there. And Aguma K is going to be the tan and white mix one there. And they said hello. Enjoy the show. All right, guys, we've made it over. And uh, this first body of water that you guys see us focusing on right here is, y'all had to watch. Excuse my uh, interruption to commentary here. I'm having to keep these guys off of me. But the first bottle of water you guys see here, no doubt is the most important body of water we have here on the homestead. Uh, this is our kind of our, our bait pond here. Uh, we've got some koi in here. We've got goldfish in here. We've got uh, um, mainly where we uh, breed our green sunfish. Uh, I'm, got, I'm sure if any of you guys are familiar with fish, then you know that green sunfish, most of the time people refer to them as a nuisance. Not us. We don't waste nothing here on the homestead, guys. We put some PVC pipe and some Christmas trees and that sort of things in here for those green sunfish to reproduce. And uh, if you guys would, Check out some of our other, other videos and you'll see us throwing a cast net in here and netting some of these fish out of here for these guys come harvest time. But uh, as I said, we pull a lot of our fish out here to feed a lot of the animals here on the homestead. Uh, our pigs like sunfish. Our ducks, as you can see, like sunfish. Um, most of our birds kind of eat sunfish, guys. And our catfish farm raised. No, nah, I didn't say USDA. More like cross the creek DA. Our catfish love these uh, green sunfish as well. So uh, our green sunfish uh, pond here is easily, in my opinion, one of the most important. Any of you that know anything about farming and uh, homestead style of ponds, you know that um, bait, guys, is the most important thing on any homestead as far as raising these kind of animals that you guys see here on our channel um the kids like to fish in here as well they'll get the fishing pole out every now and then and they would come out and throw down off the bank side there and uh and just see what they can catch but uh this part here again really important what we're going to do is we're going to let these fish um make their way at home and uh kind of repopulate you know it's been a good one. It's been a good one. It holds water year round here. I'd have to say it's probably, I don't know, a 20th of an acre. You know, at that. It's not a very big uh, place here, but it does in some areas, you know, to get three to four foot deep, which is what you need. You know, the depth is a little more important than, you know, the circumference of a pond. But uh, it gets deep in some areas where they can get down in those areas and breed. And y'all, it's loaded. I'm talking about full of, I'm talking about McAllister's Deli Spud Max loaded. Loaded. But, uh, that's it, guys. I want to stop in and show you guys that. The next pond I'm going to show you guys is Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Island. Uh, I know some of you guys that watch the video, videos regularly probably are wondering why are you showing this? You know, we've already, you know, we've already met on Gilligan's Island. But uh, I'm showing you guys this in relation to this video is because I don't know if that camera's picking it up or not, but you can see some of our fingerlings are already starting to grow in here. Guys, we're going to be raising tilapia in this pond. And uh, tilapia is one of those fish that are dual purpose. They make good feeder fingerlings. 
for your catfish. And, um, they also make good frying pan fish. If we can't catch no catfish, I'll just start frying tilapia, I reckon so. But um, right now we're, we've got mosquito fish in it, and we've got uh, rosy red minnows in here, and we've got feeder goldfish in here as well. Just to kind of uh, get this water cycled through and uh, to get bait fish kind of established before you start bringing in those predatory fish. We've been looking at um, different websites as far as ordering tilapia. Yeah, our ducks use it as well. But uh, they'll eat the tilapia too. But uh, I've been looking at different websites as far as ordering to the tilapia. And I've seen uh, you can have some uh, imported in or we can just go get, you know, regular classical old Blue, Blue Nile tilapia. Blue Nile tilapia. But uh, we don't know. We're at least going to get some breeders to put in here. We may build some more tanks. Uh, I can't believe I just said that. I ain't building nothing else. Guys, we've got tanks in other areas. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you, please check out some of our other videos and you'll understand why I kind of hesitated on that build another tank. What am I thinking? Woo, woo, talking about doggone. But uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put up some breeders in here and we're going to move the fingerlings over to our green sunfish area, our green sunfish pond over that way, and also our catfish pond as well. He's going to be an integral piece to our puzzle here, so I wanted to at least show you guys that. Y'all, this chicken has interrupted our pond video somebody better tell him this is a pond fishing video i will send a hook through him and drop him to the bottom hole he's interrupting all our videos let's get him out of here walking back up i know it's a pond movie but shorty cowgirl right there just wanted to tell y'all hello and old michael blackson right here we may hang on again guys i'm having to talk a little quieter because we're here at another one of my bait area here. And I need to show you guys another element of what we do. As far as targeting bait fish and having enough bait fish to supply um, tilapia and that sort of thing. You guys see that creek right there? I've got a trap in there. And I think I've got fish in it. But those fish are smart, y'all. We do this pretty often. And when they hear me, they fly right out of that trap. So I'm going to walk on down there and try to get that. Y'all stay tuned. I'll tell you a little more after. Well, here's the setup, guys. Um, we normally keep this thing, you know, baited up with dog food or something like that and left in this creek throughout the day. And normally I do pretty well on it. When I said it this time around, the fish were so small. By the time I pulled it up, they started coming out the whole sides of the holes of the trap. But I'm going to set it back in and see if we can catch something a little bigger by the end of the day. And we're going to walk back up here and we'll discuss um, our catfish setup. So as we're walking up now, guys, what you're seeing is our catfish setup. Uh, this area here is where we raise and breed our catfish. Um, I had this pond dug probably about, I don't know, six or seven years ago. And uh, since then, it's kind of been where we hang out and spend our family time and such but uh we've got channel catfish i put some in when i first dug the pond and then you know we've added let's just say i've collected some fishing trips in ponds and lakes and, and uh, rivers in the area and um we've got some koi in here we've got um some shishoa koi we also breed koi in this pond as well and we use a koi as kind of our, our bottom feeders, you know. Sorry about that wind noise in the camera, guys. But a lot of ch people choose to have grass carp and that kind of thing. But we like koi. They're a little more decorative. You can feed them up. They're a little more uh, family friendly. Um, so each spring and summer, we try to add a pair of tilapia in here as well. Because the Blue Nile tilapia are uh, overpopulators and an invasive species in some bodies of water in other um, areas. But... Uh, and adding them to this pond here it just produces more feed guys anything that cuts down on my feed bill i take it by god but uh we've got some brim in here and uh you know let's just say other types of uh pan fish but uh there's a video link guys where that aerator is a do-it-yourself uh, kind of ordeal. It just kind of keeps the pond aerated. Any of you with ponds know that a good aerated pond 
is to keep bigger fish. Keeps the, the fish healthy where they can swim around and eat more and thrive a little more. So we built that do-it-yourself kind of um, aerator on it. It's done well. It's done well. Like I said, I encourage you guys to click through, thumb through some of our other videos so you can see some of that stuff. It's been decent, you know, for this size homestead, guys. We're a small, small homestead. This pond here, uh, I've got the dimensions in, in the house there, but this pond here is near a half acre pond, um, which is a small pond, but good size for what we need, you know, and growing feed, I'm sorry, and growing fish to feed a family. Um, we've added a lot of features around the outside of it. We've planted um, winter rye around the edges of it to kind of keep it up. It'll come in as the water goes down, the rye will start to come in. We've added security features all around the pond. Y'all, I hate to say it, and it's pathetic to say, but anytime you go to add a catfish to a pond, you always have uh, the threat of people, you know, let's just say wanting to share your fish with, with you. So we've added a bunch of kind of motion features that automatically um, contact our local law authority. Um, so, and that's happened once, guys. Let me tell you a story real quick. Anna and I are in the bed. Cops come knocking on the door. We don't know what's going on. Well, our house alarm is connected to our motion detector we have around the pond area here and uh, I guess our alarm house alarm system contacted police police knocking on the door turns out you would not believe it y'all we we didn't have the setting set correctly and Shelby activated the alarm talking by God not scared but uh we've added features you know to the area to kind of make it comfortable for us. These do-it-yourself benches we've made. I made those benches there in the awning area over there. It's where we do a lot of cleaning of these fish. But uh, I'd say if you're wanting to stock a pond and want to uh, restock it each year, on a pond this size, half acre pond, to put 75 to 100 catfish in it, uh, catfish fingerlings. Um, but you guys know, of course, it crossed the creek. Let's just say I didn't follow those math rules wisely. But they're in there. But, uh, I'd say, yeah, maybe 75 to 100 catfish in a pond this size. That's something you can kind of clean and freeze. Guys, the catfish price is going up at the grocery store. $9 a pound. By the time you guys see this video, it might be $11 a pound. But, uh, we got kind of deep freezers where we store these fish. And you guys have seen videos where I've uh, myself got out here and caught some fish for some of the subscribers on the channel that Doris is say she's still country. I'm gonna get this aerator turned off and I'm gonna throw some feed out here and we're gonna see if I can introduce some, some of my pet fish to y'all. That's right, y'all heard that right. Yes, JM, I've got pet fish. I've got a couple pet fish, y'all, and I've got some eater sized catfish. And uh, a lot of my friends on the channel make fun of my pet fish. But let's see if I can get some of them to come up. A lot of them have distinct features. And the guys, I keep in mind, I've fed these fish for six or seven years. That's just like you at home. If you get a, a pet and you feed it six or seven years, then you start to realize the distinct features. All right, guys, as I continue to talk to you kind of about our setup here, I'm going to toss some feed in. I want you guys to bear with me because sometimes they take a little while to come up, especially during this time of day. I'm not, I don't typically feed them at this time of day. And if you guys look over here, there's a cow in the water, so I don't know if that may interrupt how they're feeling or not. But, uh, in this area here, I don't know if I heard one come up or not. Maybe not. I've got some pallets dropped off that area right there. Uh, old Rod Snatcher lives under there. And, uh, I'm gonna throw some feed off this side. See if I can get Rod Snatcher up. Okay, so now we're on the opposite side here. So, and, uh, on this side here, you guys know this side, main channel ledge. You want to get into a big fish competition? Main channel ledge is where you want to be. Let's see if we can get. Let's see if we can get Big Boy Jones to come up. Guys, there's no way this camera's picking it up. There's no way. But in this area here, where you see the bubbles there, I'm on the other side of the pond here. Uh, I'm out here on the secondary channel now, where the cows are. But uh, I've got to get over, guys, because that looks like rod snatchers coming up. But I want to let you guys know, I'm still throwing feed in here. I'm over here on the secondary channel. And this is where old Cotton Eye Joe lives. And I'm talking about, where'd you come from? Where'd you go? Where'd you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Cotton Eye Joe. 
It should be picking that up right there. It should be picking it up. I, I, I'll be honest with you guys. I did, he didn't let me get close enough to be even identify which one he was. Oh, he's a, he came up on that other side there. Let's go back over, guys. That may have been a koi there. I'm talking a little lower, guys, because I've snuck over. I've spotted Cotton Eye Joe. But uh, I wanted to say, guys, what we've set up in here in the pond is we've set up, again, breeding stations. Um, channel catfish typically need uh, some kind of cave or some kind of indention into the pond bank there where uh, they can get in and kind of set the baby. So we've put in some um, piping and that sort of thing in treetops as well uh, for our other panfish uh, but so we've got it set up where we can kind of still reproduce some of those eater size ones that we eat and also uh, send to some of you guys but uh, our pet fish I hang on to a lot of my friends we had a lot of falling out they come over here and I'm talking about Reese's one Reese Reese Lockett Reese Lockett Hook into a good one, and I tell you, you gotta turn them loose. You gotta turn them loose. You gotta stay here. But uh, the kids enjoy coming out and feeding them. If you guys thinking about digging a pond, you know, in a homesteading uh, kind of environment, uh, small setting, nothing too big, not a huge scale pond, uh, catfish would be a good fit for you. Um, the suggestion that I'd make, I think that. If I had to change one thing, uh, it'd be the death of this pond. I went way too uh, excessive on this side with the depth because I was concerned with wanting to keep a special kind of panfish in here. And uh, so on this left side here, you're looking at 10 to 12 foot, whereas a catfish typically only needs about a three or four foot pond uh, to do everything that they need to do. So uh, that's kind of where we set up our breeding area on this side. You'll, there's treetops all throughout here that are uh, it's stuck into the side of the pond underneath that go, I don't know, maybe seven or eight foot. So when you guys see us hook into these fish, what they typically do is they just fly over to those treetops just to see if they can get themselves turned loose. Get themselves turned loose. But uh, as you can see, they're not really that shy. The cows are still in the pond. These are all either size fish that are coming up here. Um, I'm. I've been thinking, guys, I'm thinking I'm seeing Broke Whisker right here, but he's just so far, and I'm not even comp. There he is. I don't know if you saw that there. He's just so far out there that I don't know if the, the camera will even uh, pick him up there. Um, all of our pets, guys, are, are all upwards of uh, 15 to 20 pounds, um, and that's on the scale. I've never uh, measured them in length, but on the scale, all of the ones that are named are, I say 15, but I'll say 12 to 20 pounds. Uh, Cause I do got some small ones that's got some new names since you guys been watching. Uh, but I'm just out of feeding my catfish like Dexter's World, tilapia, and uh, trying to get them right. Y'all know how that can be. Y'all know how that can be. Let me see. I'm gonna see if I can get them any closer for yuns. Let's see if we can get them any closer for yuns. these guys are eater size the, the bigger fish are not going to come out in the middle of the day they're going to come out at feeding time and quite frankly they're looking for bigger baits they're looking for bigger meals to eat i encourage you click on some of those fishing videos when you guys see me dropping those whole chickens down to the bottom mm. whole catfish head we got a video, guys, where we cleaned the fish and dropped his head back in and caught something on it. Guys, before I get too far in this thing, uh, before I forget, I need to get, send an anniversary shout-out. 
T. Leslie, uh, and his wife, 24 years. Y'all, 24 years is a long time, ain't it? Sometimes I don't even know if Hannah can put up with me 24 hours, let alone 24 years. Shout out to the couple over in Harvest. But, uh, if you're watching this thing, I went fishing with the man and, uh, I wore him out too. I wore him out too. Him and Bud. Him and Bud both had to take a whooping out there. But, uh, y'all, that's definitely, if you look right out your underways out there, that's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I can tell by his lip. Yep, it's got a, he's got that, uh, a white circle on his lip. I'm gonna see if I can get a closer image for y'all. And, uh, that's where I hooked them guys on a, what do you call that? On a jug line. And I got to pull it on the jug. Guys, I may have run them off. And, uh, when I turned them loose, he turned some water back loose in my eye. It looked like he told me, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And that's what I named them. That was wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. No doubt about it. No doubt about it, it was. These are all some eater sizes here up on the bank here. Those are all right in that fun size range there. There go leather lips. That was leather lips. But what we feed guys is uh, it is the Perina uh, floating catfish feed. You can get floating feed or sinking feed. Uh, I choose the floating feed uh, typically because the kids like to see the catfish come up and eat. Uh, the sinking feed works best with uh, you know, our koi, any of the smaller fish that are too shy to come up and eat with those guys right there. Y'all, even those fun sized fish will give a bluegill a tough, hard day. I'm talking about hard, hard. Let me stop right there. I don't want you to get carried away with that. But, uh, oh, you see, you tried to hit that dragonfly that come up there. I'm going to pitch some off the other side here, guys. And, uh, because I've got a couple of more that I want to try to introduce you guys to before I end this thing today. Thanks for watching. Our little paddle boat here we use every now and then if we're going jug lining and such. But I turned it on because I wanted to come over to this point here. Uh, off this point here, uh, well, let me just back up. On this left side here, I'm going to try to get Hammerhead to come up. Hammerhead lives on this left side. I don't know if he'll come up or not. Let's pitch some feed out there and see what happens. And then... Hammerhead wannabe lives. Guys, if you saw the la the video uh, where Skylar thinks she caught Hammerhead, she caught Hammerhead wannabe. And he's right out here. Let's see if we can get old wannabe to come up as well. But I would suggest, guys, the uh, floating feed, if you're getting fish that you just kind of want to see, um, you know, kind of interact with. Kind of interact with. But, guys, I would suggest... Uh, Floating feed mixing is what we do. We mix the floating feed with the sinking feed. And uh, it gives the fish a, a, a mixed variety. But uh, a lot of times, guys, we'll do that or we'll chum up like some green sunfish that we've kind of bred and harvested out of that pond there. And we'll bring those over sometime as well. One of the benefits of, uh, of choosing to breed these fish, of course, it's more work in catching the hatchlings out. You've got to uh, constantly be netting and catching hatchlings, whether they're koi, whatever you want out of there. Uh, which it serves us well because we've got to be knitting anyway because that's what our pigs, that's a heavy part of their protein diet. But uh, one of the benefits in setting it up where they breed and reproduce is you don't have to um, always be buying and purchasing fish, waiting for the fish truck. Go to the co-op and you see those guys waiting for the fish truck. Oh, I say waiting on the fish truck. All right, Hannah, back to business. But uh, you're not always constantly waiting on the fish truck. These guys, uh, they just reproduce. What we found out last week, guys, was we were out just cleaning fish, you know, getting fish prepared, you know, for one of the yings, or for harvesting. Uh, what we found out was we were cleaning some females, guys, that had eggs in them. We were cleaning females with eggs in them, so I told Hannah that wasn't going to cut it. So, uh, we got us some ponds set up, and I'm going to show you guys one more of the koi pond on the inside here. But we got us some ponds set up where we can kind of harvest these things. 
Y'all, we're going to head back up and look at the tank where we're breeding our koi there. I was walking out here, and I got a little frustrated with some of my fish back there. I said, they want to come up and meet y'all. That's kind of rude. But uh, I put that food in at the wrong time of day, and quite frankly, I didn't want y'all to see them all anyway, especially you. All right, guys, so we've made it to our last tank here. Uh, this is the Kafala. And uh, yes, we're a homestead. We're not an aquarium shop. So with that being said, guys, a lot of you guys have seen this pond, but even this pond um, has its use. A lot of those fingerlings and things that you guys saw are, are also raised in this pond. A lot of the fingerlings that we can use at the creek that we catch are raised in this pond as well. So yes, it has the core, and eventually these core guys will end up in the cactus pond out there. So you guys see that. So yes, it does have its koi in here, but um, we're also raising fingerlings that will feed the sunfish. The sunfish will feed the pigs and so on, and the pigs will feed us. So uh, it's all regenerative at its finest, guys. Hey, we've got another video up where you guys can see where we built this thing uh, and how we built it, all the way from the wood to the liner we chose and so on. But uh, again, you guys can see. It's got mosquito fish in here. It'll have tilapia in here. Uh, it's got goldfish, guys. Even the goldfish will have a purpose one day. Loophole! Loophole! Found a loophole that time, how? Goldfish got a purpose one day. Guys, goldfish going down. Goldfish going down. We might send a hook through one of them in an upcoming video. But for those who stick, stuck around, we're going to wrap this video up, but we're going to wrap it up one way, guys, and that's country style. Look at this old greasy shad head here. Let's bait him up, and let's see if old Bob wants to come out and play today. Stay tuned. Guys, I can't thank you guys enough for watching our videos. He says he'll come over. Whoa, whoa. He says, wait a minute now. You're trespassing, he says. Mason, if you're watching this thing, he cutting up now. But, uh, he got him just moving around. He's going to follow this shed wherever I take him to. Because he's hungry, hungry, hungry. Guys, let's get this thing fed up and get out of here. I wouldn't want any of you to get hurt. He says, thanks for watching. Peace. Mm -hmm.